Hello, welcome to News Review from BBC Learning English. I'm Tom, and joining me today is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hello, Tom. Hello, everybody. Today's story comes from Egypt, where delays continue along the Suez Canal. Don't forget, if you want to test yourself on the vocabulary from today's program, we have a quiz at bbclearningenglish.com. Now, let's hear more about this story from a BBC radio report. Another tugboat has arrived to help the growing effort to refloat the giant container ship, which has been blocking the Suez Canal since last Tuesday. There are now 12 tugs trying to dislodge the Ever Given, which has stopped all shipping along one of the world's most important trade routes. So there's a big problem in the Suez Canal in Egypt. A large ship called the Ever Given got stuck in the canal on March the 23rd. This has caused delays in what is one of the world's busiest shipping routes. At the time of recording, efforts to free the ship are still going on. However, it's an uncertain situation at the moment. Experts are saying it could take some time before the Suez Canal is fully reopened. And we've got three words and expressions that you've found to talk about today's story, Catherine. What are they? Yes, we have stricken, budges and stretches. Stricken, budges and stretches. Okay, Catherine, let's have a look at your first headline for today, please. Okay, we are starting in the United States with CNN, the headline, Syria forced to Russian fuel as stricken ship keeps Suez Canal blocked. Stricken, badly affected by problems. Catherine, please tell us more. Yes, stricken. It's an adjective. It is spelt S-T-R-I-C-K-E-N, stricken. And we use it when something, in is, when something is in a very bad condition or to describe a very serious problem. So in this case, we're talking about a stricken ship. The ship cannot move. It's stuck. This is a serious serious situation which prevents the ship from doing what it normally does. So we say the ship is stricken. So the strict, the, excuse me, the, the ship mouthful. is stricken uh, by this problem that it can't move. It's badly affected. Lots of other people are stricken as well, I assume. Can we just use stricken for ships. When else can we use this adjective? Well, we often use it for people um, and we can use it in, in a number of ways for people. We can use it to when something externally affects you really badly. So you can be stricken by poverty, for example, if you're very poor. Um, you can be stricken with poverty is the second preposition. So you can be stricken by or with something. Um, and we can also use it for emotions. So you can be stricken with grief. So if you have a, a big loss um, and this loss is quite disabling for you, you can't function as normal. And um, same, you can be stricken by fear or stricken with fear. If you're really, really frightened, you can see it in somebody's face when they're stricken with fear. The, the shock, you can be stricken by shock. Stricken with panic, Tom. You can be stricken with panic as well. <laughs> so we've got fear, shock, panic. I think you can be stricken by disease as yes. well. All very negative things, yes. right? All problems which will very badly affect yes. us. Yes, it's not good to be stricken. Let's have a look at that summary slide, please. So, ships can be stricken with problems. People can be stricken with problems. Penguins can also be stricken with problems. We have a news review from the archive about penguins who are being stranded in South America. Catherine, how can our audience access this video? It's really simple. Just click that link. Just click that link. Okay, fantastic. Catherine, let's have a look at your second headline for today, please. OK, let's go to the Metro in the UK. The headline, mega ship blocking Suez Canal budges for first time. Budges, what a lovely word. Budges, 
moves. Catherine, what can you tell us about budges? Well, I can start by telling you it's a verb tub and it's spelt B-U-D-G-E-S. Budges, they're in the third person with the S on the end. It's all about movement and it's a very informal word. So if you're sitting on a sofa with your mate, Tom, and they're taking up too much space, <laughs> then you can say... I could say budge up. You know, budge up, you know, move up, budge over. Budge along. Yeah, I, I could give them a budge. You, you know? could, yes, just push them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's informal and it's to do with movement, right? Are there any other kind of ways that we can use budges or budge? Well, we've just done some exp um, examples of, of using budge to describe things that are moving, but we can also use budge in the negative to describe things that won't move. And this is really common, um, a common way of using the word mm. budge. So you've got that bottle of tomato ketchup, Tom. You've got your fish and chips and you just want, or just your chips if you're a vegan, and you want to put tomato ketchup on and you're trying to get that bottle top off and you're really going and it won't move it won't, it won't budge it won't budge <laughs> it won't budge at all okay so budge it can have a literal meaning about sort of physical movement but we can also use it in a figurative way as well right yes we can we can use it to describe people who are very stubborn or their ideas or plans or things that they're not going to change now imagine tom you're selling your bicycle aren't you for 100 pounds but i give Good you a price. call yes and i say tom um mates rates come on do it for 90 i'll give you 90 pounds for your bike your bike what do you say well, I'm going to say, Catherine, I'm a very stubborn person. I don't want to move from my position. So unfortunately, I won't budge. I won't move. I could also say, sorry, you know, that I just refuse to budge. Nice fixed expression, to refuse to budge. And we use it not just when we're selling things, but you can talk about um, any sort of fixed idea. Politicians often refuse to budge when they've made a decision about something and they won't change it. They won't budge an inch, right? Won't budge an inch. So that sounds like a very familiar expression. expression. But before we get to that, let's take a look at our summary slide, please. Not budge an inch. This is quite an old expression, right, Catherine? It is. It appeared even in a Shakespeare play. And we did a lovely little animation about it. If you want to watch the animation, learn more about Shakespeare's phrase, not budge an inch, just click the link. Great. Catherine, let's have a look at your next headline, please. Yes, we're still in the UK with the Telegraph. Suez Canal blockage stretches to a fifth day in pictures. Stretches becomes longer than normal. Catherine, tell us about this word, stretches. Yes, this one is also a verb in the third person. The spelling is S-T-R-E-T-C-H-E-S. -E -E the pronunciation, stretches. So, stretch. When, as a verb, when could I stretch or when might we stretch? Well, you can use stretch first thing in the morning, Tom. As soon as you wake up, what do you do? I give it one of these. <laughs> oh, I have a... <laughs> I kind of make my arms a bit longer than normal. I stretch my muscles. Good example. Yes. And then you jump out of bed because you've had a great stretch and you put on your stretch jeans, don't you, Tom? I do, yes. Yeah. So if my jeans stretch, they kind of become longer than normal so they fit my legs perfectly, right? That's right, yes. So anything that becomes a little bit longer than normal, we can describe that as a stretch. Now, I'm not sure, but I think we're talking about ships here, not <laughs> not what yes. I do in the yes. not what not what I do in the morning. So why is this word stretch important in the headline? Okay. Well, the ship itself isn't stretching. The ship is the same length. It's not becoming normal, but the time that is it's it is stuck is becoming longer and longer and longer and none of this is normal. So we're using stretch to describe time here. Interestingly, 
Stretch is also the name as a noun that we can give to a body of water, especially a river or a canal. So the headline writers have done what headline writers love to do. They've used a word with a double meaning. So the time is stretching and the ship is also in a stretch of water. So the time stretching is in a stretch of water. Do you think maybe it's also because the ship is very long? Do you think this is why they put it in there? Uh, I think that's a bit of a stretch, actually. <laughs> okay, that example's much better. A bit of a stretch. What do you mean, Catherine, okay. when you say a bit of a stretch? Yeah, another meaning of the word stretch is when is we use a stretch or the phrase a bit of a stretch to describe something that's unlikely or really out of the ordinary, not or quite difficult. So, for example, um, if you said to me, Tom, let's do another news review straight after this one, I could say, I'm not sure, Catherine. That would be quite tricky. That would be quite tricky, or that would be a bit of a stretch. Sure. It would be unlikely or quite difficult to do. Yes, good example. Okay, great. Well, it's not a bit of a stretch <laughs> to get our summary slide up. So let's have a look at that one, please. Fantastic. Catherine, can you please give us a recap of today's vocabulary? I can. We had stricken, strongly affected by problems. We had budges, moves, and stretches becomes longer than normal. Lovely. And don't forget that we have a quiz, so test yourself on it at bbclearningenglish.com. And of course, we are all over social media as well. That's it from us today. Thanks for being here and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.